Welcome and hello. This is a video tutorial on HEC HMS. And in this lesson, we're going to be discussing subbasin transform methods, specifically the Clark unit hydrograph and the mod clunk method. What I have on the screen here is a watershed. It's already been delineated. And I'm going to just uh, zoom in on the downstream part of this watershed. And we have a subbasin number 59 here. I'm going to use this subbasin as an example for this lesson. All right, so if I go ahead and click on this subbasin 59, it is selected here in the basin model map. It's also highlighted over here on the left in the uh, watershed explorer. And then down below, I have the components editor where I have my subbasin tab with uh, the different methods. What we're going to be talking about here in this lesson is the transform method. And as you can see, we have a drop down, so we can select uh, a number of options uh, none. Clark unit hydrograph, kinematic wave, mod Clark, SCS unit hydrograph, and so on. And you can read the rest. But um, we're going to be talking about Clark unit hydrograph as well as mod Clark, modified version. The default transform method that is assigned to a subbasin when the subbasin is created can be controlled. If you go up to Tools, Program Settings, and then click on this defaults tab. Subbasin transform right here. I'll have it set to Clark unit hydrograph, but you can set it to any of the options here. We'll just go with that. Okay. The purpose of a transform method is to generate an outflow hydrograph based on the precipitation and all the other factors, typically a unit hydrograph, but it sort of depends on the transform method itself. So let's go ahead and get started. If I come down here to the transform dropdown, the first option is actually none, so I should probably cover that first. None basically means the basin will transform all excess precipitation as runoff at the end of each time step. So this is not uh, very realistic. It doesn't take into account, you know, your time of concentration or any of the, the typical parameters. So let's uh, let's actually use uh, Clark unit hydrograph. All right, when I select Clark unit hydrograph, I now have a transform tab right here in my components editor. And then I have some uh, parameters that I need to define the values for. So let me go ahead and make this a little wider. Yeah. So now they all fit onto the same uh, row here. And then here's my transform tab. Uh, I have two different methods, the, or sorry, three methods, standard, variable parameter, and then Maricopa County. So let's go ahead and start with the standard method first. First, what we have to do is uh, input the time of concentration for this subbasin, and this is in hours. So think back to your first hydrology class. The time of concentration is the time it takes the most hydrologically remote location of the watershed for a drop of water to contribute to the outlet. So I'm just going to type in some numbers here as we work through these different uh, parameters. This time of concentration could also be thought of as the time needed for runoff to travel across the entire watershed and contribute to the peak outflow at the outlet. The next uh, variable here, the next parameter that we need to define is the storage coefficient. This is oftentimes used for variable R in equations. In a linear reservoir, this value represents how much water is stored and delayed before being released to the outlet. This coefficient is used to model the attenuation effects where higher storage coefficients lead to more gradual releases and more broader hydrographs. Okay, and then the last uh, value here is time area method. We have a default and then we have a percentage curve. So if you're fine with the default, you can select that. If you're not, you can define the percentage curve. The default value, it doesn't tell you what it is here and nor does it in the user's manual, but it does in the technical manual. What I have on the screen here is the HMS technical reference manual, which has more details, more equations and more descriptions than you're going to be seeing in uh, the user's manual for sure. This is the default right here that we were talking about. And what it's going to do is it's going to say that the area at time t that's contributing to the flow of the outlet is a function of uh, either one of these two equations based on the time being uh, more or less than half of the time of concentration. So you plug your numbers in here. It would obviously start at zero and end at 100% or one, but you can go ahead and plot this uh, curve to see what it looks like. I will leave a link in the description of this video to this website, as well as the, the Mod Clark Technical Reference Manual.
This default time area method is a good approximation for most subbasins, typically used for elliptical shaped subbasins. All right, um, the percentage curve is, like I said, another way to define the time area method. And we don't have any percentage curves defined in our model yet here in our file. What we need to do is provide a paired data set of the percentage type. So if I go up to components, paired data manager, what we want to select is percentage curves. So it's a percentage versus a percentage and then click new, then give that, give it a name and then create. All right. So there's the curve. I just called it uh, standard percentage curve 59 and then close that. Now we can select that curve right here in our drop down. Now, of course, the curve has to be defined with data. All we've done is created it, named it and assigned it. But if we go up to our paired data uh, directory and then percentage curves here in the top left, the, this is the watershed explorer. And then we select that curve. Now we can either enter data manually in a table. So it'd like B00, and then uh, the last record would be 100, 100. But then uh, we'd also have to have multiple intervening rows here to define that curve. Or it, if we wanted to select um, the DSS file, we could do that as well, and then specify the file name and the path name. All right, so that's how that works. Let's go back to our sub basin, click on the transform tab, and then, um, yeah, we can just set that curve like that. That's the standard method. The next method is the variable parameter method. This method is used uh, in situations where there is a lot of precipitation and the user's manual references the probable maximum precipitation event because when there's just huge rainfall events, then the linear assumption that's built into the Clark unit hydrograph is sometimes violated. So what we would still use is the time of concentration and the storage coefficient, but we'd also have this index excess and it's in inches per hour. It's typically one inch per hour or it's, uh, one millimeter per hour because it's used as an index. And then what we do next is provide a time of concentration curve and a storage coefficient curve, which is a percentage curve, just like we defined earlier. And it's going to be a percentage of that index excess. So the index excess would be our independent variable and then the time of concentration curve um, and the storage coefficient curve would uh, be the dependent variables for these two curves. So let's go ahead and create these curves real quick. I'm going to go up to components and then create uh, pair data manager and then select the percentage curves again. Here's the first one we created. I'm going to click new here, give it a name, and then let's do one more new there's uh, for the storage coefficient and create okay so now we can set those to what they are and of course we need to provide data in the paired data manager for those two curves there's uh the time of concentration and there's the storage coefficient okay so we have to provide that data as well all right let's go back to our transform method the time area method, this is uh, what we talked about previous with uh, standard methods, so nothing new there. The last option for method in the Clark unit hydrograph is Maricopa County, Arizona, USA. I couldn't tell you why it's called that, but there's probably a story behind it. This particular method takes into account some of the physical characteristics of the watershed, or in this case, the subbasin that we're defining, such as the flow path length. Here is the flow path length. I'm just gonna type in some numbers. The adjusted flow path slope. This is the watercourse slope of the longest flow path. I'll just say 11. The units is feet per mile. I'm sorry. So uh, we have 0.8 miles, 11 feet per mile. It's not that steep. And then the resistance coefficient is going to be, I'll say 0.2. This is a parameter used to account for flow resistance in the watershed, such as friction caused by land cover, channel conditions, and topography. These variables are L. S and K sub B, and they are oftentimes estimated. I'm going to bring up that technical manual again and uh, scroll down. Here is the Maricopa County, Arizona method discussion, and we have a time of concentration and a storage coefficient, and it's based on the length, that K sub B value. Here's the slope, and then this I value here is an intensity. I is the average excess precipitation intensity in inches per hour or millimeters per hour. So the units are kind of wild, but um, I'm sure time of concentration is in hours. So once we have the time of concentration, we can calculate the storage coefficient. 
nor here. The next method is mod Clark. So we talked about Clark unit hydrograph. Mod Clark is a modification of the Clark unit hydrograph. This method represents the subbasin as a collection of gridded cells, as opposed to one single subbasin. It's also worth mentioning when using mod Clark that the discretization method needs to be either structured or a file specified. So what I mean by that is if you go to the subbasin tab here in the components editor, then the discretization here, our options are none, structured, unstructured, or file specified. If we're using mod Clark, it needs to be either structured or file specified. So I'll just leave it at structured for that. I don't want to talk any more about the discretization method in this video, but if you want to check out lesson 15 in this playlist titled Subbasin Discretization, I go into more detail about all these discretizations and the details of how they work. So remember, we're working in mod Clark for the transform method. And if I click on the transform tab, uh, we now have two methods, standard and variable parameter. I'm going to type in some different numbers here, 14.43, and we'll go with 17.31. Okay, so the time of concentration here in mod Clark represents the maximum travel time in the subbasin. The grid cell with the max travel time will have an index of 1, and then all the other cells will be scaled to that maximum index. The storage coefficient here, 17.31, this value is used for all the cells in the basin, so it's not cell-specific. If we switch over to variable parameter, we would have the same time of concentration, storage coefficient, and then just like the Clark unit hydrograph, we have an index excess, and this is uh, precipitation, so we'll just say inches per hour. We'll set one as our index, and then as before, we would define and select a paired data set for the time of concentration and the storage coefficient, this time using the mod Clark method of transform. So that was it for this video. We talked about the Clark unit hydrograph and the mod Clark methods for transform. This is a, the process of generating runoff from the subbasin in HEC HMS.